we'll go to economics chapter 13, <laughs> market economic system. When we talking about market economic system, we're talking about an economic system where resources allocation is being determined by the market forces of demand and supply. So which means resources allocation is being determined by individual firms. You get it? Because when we talk about demand and supply, we're talking about firms and consumers. So here in the market economy system, it's about price mechanism. So the demand for a product and the supply of a product determines the price of the product. So the market system, uh, a market economy system is that economy system where resource allocation is being determined by individuals and firms. Is it clear? Yes. So let's go down. Here is a, a number of countries are there. Yes. A number of countries are increasing the role of market forces and reducing the role of the government in their economies. Cuba is increasing the role of market forces in its, in its economy because Cuba used to be a planned economy. Resource allocation is being determined by government in Cuba, but now it's changing. That's what they are saying there. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Introducing the topic. Are you there? Yeah. A number of countries said a number of countries are increasing the role of market forces and reducing the role of government in their economies. For example, Cuba. Cuba has is a, Cuba was a planned economy, but now there's introduction of what they start trying to change it towards the market system. That is the point there. So the country's government has legalized the private sale of cars and homes and removed some price controls and regulations. Why is it making these changes? When price is being determined and controlled by government, it means it's a planned system. But if government is taking away those policies and trying to privatize them, it means they are trying to change from being a planned system into what a market or mixed economy. But here we are focusing on market system. So because we're focusing on market system, we wouldn't say what the Cuba government is doing is a mixed system. We would say Cuba government is trying to switch into what a market economic system. Because in the market economy system, it's about private individuals, it's about privatization. Individual demand and supply determines the price of goods and services. Is it clear? Yes. I will move on. As noted in chapter six, resources move automatically as a result of changes in price. In turn, price changes are determined by the interaction of demand and supply. I told you already. So the demand for a product and the supply of a product determines the price of such products. That's what they're saying there. So the use of resources is changing all the time in response to changes in consumer demand and the cost of production. So how we use resources are changing over time. And what brings about these changes? What brings about them are, one, the cost of production for firms and the demand of consumers towards products. Yes. You get the point I'm making here. Yes. So, use of, now the question is about the use of resources. They said, what brings about changes in the use of resources? What brings about them is one. The consumption, the level of consumption, that means the level of demand within the economy. That means the use of resources, because if demand continues to rise, resources will be used up. Yes or no? That's the first one. The second one is from the firms now, the cost of production, because the cost of production is the price, is the amount you spend in producing goods. These goods are not, they are not free, uh, they are not from free sources. Yes or no? They're not free. So, they are, they, are, they are not free goods, they are economic goods. And because they are economic goods, it means that we are using resources that we have to buy, the factors of production. So how cheap are the factors of production? We will determine the level of our output. So if factors of production are expensive, the cost of production will be expensive. Then that will determine if they need to use the resources or not. Because they have to decide if it is justifiable to use these resources or not. It will only be justifiable if they're going to be profit maximization. So that's what helps. For consumers, they want to derive benefits, satisfaction, utility. 
Mm-hmm. So that determines the level of demand. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now go down. That said, it's also moved towards those products whose, whose demand is rising and away from those which are becoming less popular. Figure 13.1 shows an increase in demand for air travel and a ah. decrease in demand for sea travel. So look at what happens here. There's air travel and sea travel. What happens based on the graph? The demand for air travel gets higher and the price gets higher. The yes. demand for air travel from D, from, from D to D1. Shift to the right one. Yes. And the demand um, for sea travel is shifting leftward from D to D1. D1, yeah. And do you get it? Yes. So that means it, uh, that means consumption of sea travel is reducing. That means it's becoming less popular, unlike the consumption of air travel, which is becoming more popular. Do you get it? That is the point they are making here. So is it clear? Yes. Good. So an increase in demand, A, an increase in demand, B, changes in the market of air travel and sea travel. So the changes in demand causes price to change. This alteration in price encourages firms to switch their resources from sea travel to air travel. Now, you know we talked about factors that determine the factors that determine the price elasticity of supply. Yes or no? Yes. We talked about the the time at which it is easy to switch from producing product A to producing product B. So if product B it's easy to be switched to because product B is expensive now. If the price of product B is increasing. So the ability to be able to change, to switch from one product to another product will determine if the price is elastic, if the demand, or if the supply for the product is elastic or inelastic. So this goes to what they are saying here. So the price of air travel continues to rise. As a result, what causes it to rise? Because the demand for air travel is increasing. So sea travel will fall. The quantity supply for sea travel will also fall. And what happens? The prices will fall. Yes. Did you get it? So yes. few people, few businesses will continue with air travel. Because a lot of businesses are switching to what? Oh, few people will continue with sea travel because a lot of businesses are switched to producing air travel based on the fact that the price of air travel has rising over time. Is it clear? Yes. So the importance of competition and incentives. What is competition? Competition is the rivalry that exists between firms. Do you get my point here? I said what? Competition is what? The rivalry that exists between firms. So the advantage of a market economy system rely in large part on competitive pressures. One of the benefits claimed for a market system is choice. Because there's competition. As soon as there's competition, as soon as there's competitiveness, what happens? people will be able to make different choices. Because competition means what? Choice. Yes or no? Yes. Because it means we have Evo, we have Dajla, we have this, we have that, different bottled water, different companies of bottled water. Different so firms. Different firms. So this means what? This means fierce competition. And it's a good thing for customers because we will be able to choose from variety. That is the point there. Is it clear? Yes. So if the, if there's a large number of firms producing the product, consumer will have a choice of a choice of producers. This should increase the prospect of consumers deciding what is made, with producers competing with each other to meet their demand. In such a case, consumers are said to be what sovereign. We call it sovereign. Sovereign means free. You have freedom yeah. to choose from whichever. And you as consumers, you decide what to produce because there's fierce competition in the market. So everybody, we don't, there's no customer in heaven. So all the customers are here, right? So that means we want to sell to the same customers. So because we have to sell to the same customers, we need to listen to the customers so that we can attract them to our own side. So those businesses that do not listen to their customers will lose their customers. So customers become king here. Mm. Is it clear? Yeah. 
So the next paragraph, another competition, whether actual or potential, should also result in low prices. Actual competition arises when there are rivals firms in the industry. Potential competition occurs when it is easy for firms to enter or leave the industry. So what's the difference between, so we're going to what? The difference between actual competition and potential competition. Note, for actual competition, either it is actual competition or it is potential competition. Both of them tends to bring prices down. Oh, there's, there's competition in this industry. Prices will come down. There's possibility for firms to leave or enter this time. There's free entry and exit into this industry. It is what we call potential competition. Either way, prices will what? Will fall. So competition brings prices down. So either it is potential competition or actual competition, prices will be down. That is the point they are making here. So do you understand the difference between potential competition and actual competition? Actual competition is the competition that exists between firms. Yes. Potential competition is the competition. It occurs when there is free entry and, and exit into that industry. Actual, that means there's a lot of competition in the market. There are a lot of firms jostling to talk, to get the best, the most customer, to get the highest market share. Monopoly. Would, yeah, monopoly, is the... monopoly is just one. There's no competition in monopoly. Because it is the, the market. Because it's yeah. monopoly is a market situation, is a market structure where you have one supplier, supplier of goods. So only you, one. Yeah, only one. That is monopoly. A comp competition would not bring about monopoly. And fierce competition would only make things, consumers to be more happy. What could lead to monopoly is oligopoly. When you have few large firms dominating the industry. So when few large firms dominate the industry, they might collide. There's all called collision. They collide to take away those smaller ones away from the market. So it remains there. And they may team up together to become a monopoly. Do you get it? Yes, yes. And even if they don't team up, it becomes difficult for firms to come into that industry because they will make sure they use, they invest more on advertisements. We are going further now. Let's go back to where we are. So when we get to market structure, we're going to talk more of the monopoly, 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 yes. market competition, in market competition. But here, let's focus on competition here, which is still market economic system. Market economic system will bring about competitiveness. Competitiveness, either it is actual or it's potential, will, will bring down the prices of goods and services. What is actual competition? Actual competition means that there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of large firms in that industry that are competing with each other. Potential competition implies that there's possibility, there's tendency for firms to come in or go out at any point in time in that industry. Is it yes, clear? Yes, yes. So, if it is possible for consumers to switch from higher price firms to low price firms, or for other firms to start producing the product if prices and profits are high, there will be pressure on firms to keep their prices low in order to stay in business. So, why is it, uh, why is it beneficial to consumers when there's competition? It is beneficial to consumers because they can switch from a business or a firm that is selling at a higher price to a firm that is selling at a lower price. Yes. And if it becomes easier for consumers to, to switch, firms who don't have any other option than to for or to reduce their price. So they don't lose their customers. Is it clear? Yes. So to do this, they will seek to keep their costs low. Are you with me? Yes. To do this, that's fought to the last. Yes, yes, okay. To do this, they will seek to keep their cost low. The more successful a firm is in keeping its cost low, and the more it targets the desire of consumer, the more efficient it is said to be. So, what is the efficiency of a firm here? Efficiency of a firm comes from you as a firm being able, your ability as a firm to, to lower your cost and to be able to produce wow. what consumers demand. That makes it that brings about your efficiency as a firm. You won't be able to compete if you can't keep your costs 
low because it means you are running a high cost. That means you won't be able to keep the price less. Competition comes from where you are. You, you become competitive when you are able to take customers of your competitors, customers of your rivals. That makes you to be competitive. If you can't be that, if you can't take your cost, customers of your, if you can't take customers of your rivals, you are not competitive. You are just like any other business. Mm -hmm. like. But for you to be competitive, you need your prices to be low. And for your price to be at a low at a low rate, it means you have to watch or monitor or control your cost. How do you control your cost? By reducing your waste, by becoming efficient. Reducing waste, using technology, buying a bulk. So whatever you have to do to reduce, to make you to have what we call scale of, uh, to have, uh, what do we call it? Uh, economies of scale. Whatever you are able to do to make you to enjoy economies of scale will make you to become competitive. Because economies of scale is what? A cost advantage as a result of buying in bulk. A cost advantage you have as a firm because you are big. That is economies of scale. So if you are big, you should be able to lower your cost. If you are able to lower your cost, you'll be able to charge a lower price. Because you are able to charge a lower price, you get all the customers of your competitors. So all the customers come to your business. They don't want to buy from other businesses because you have a lower price. That is the point there. Is it clear? What is the advantage of the market economic system? Are you there? Yes. It goes out to you, please. The market economic system has the potential to provide some significant connected advantages, which are one. The market economic system should be very responsive to changes in consumer demand. In fact, in this economic system, consumers are said to be sovereign. This means that the consumers who have the power to determine what is produced. I told you that sovereign means that free. They have the ability to, to do whatever they want. So the first advantage of having a market economic system is that consumers are the ones that decide mostly about what to produce. Yeah. The second point. The sources should change automatically and quickly to reflect changes in consumer demand. This is what really is. Before we go into that, the second advantage is that. Okay. The advantage is advantages of market system. Oh, we didn't talk about the five six. Really? Yes. Let me go back. Oh. Okay. That's my bad. Sorry about that. So we're going to private and public sectors, right? All right. The private and public sectors. The private sector covers business organizations which are owned by shareholders or individuals. These organizations respond to change in market forces and are profit motivated. We call it a private sector because it involves businesses that are thinking more of profit. That is a private sector business. Do you get it? Any business that thinks about profit making is a private sector business. Clear? Clear, please. I thought, I thought that the uh, private sector is like sectors, businesses that, that doesn't relate with the government. Doesn't. And yeah, it does not. That's why we call it. Government does not make profit. Government doesn't think about profit. Yes, they think about the consumer. Yeah, the people. Yes. So a private sector business is any business, individuals or shareholders, that their main objective is profit maximization. That's a private sector business. Then the public sector is controlled by the government. We call them state-owned. So the difference between private sector and public sector is that the private sector is controlled by government. The public sector is controlled by government. It is not the same. Example of private sector is a sole trader, the partnership, the public limited company, not public sector. Public limited company, private limited company. What is the difference between private limited company and public limited company? A public limited company deals with shareholders. They use shareholders. That means shareholders. They have shareholders across the world. A private limited company is a company that is owned by friends and family, but they are not sole trader or partnership. 
Is it clear? Yes. Is it clear? Okay. Yes. Any questions about that? So that was all we are missing, right? Yes. Is it clear now? Yes. Good. So what are the advantages of a market economy system? The market economy system has the potential to provide as a pleasure to provide significant, okay, connected. We talk, the first one is in the market economy system, consumers are suffering because they have freedom. They decide what to produce. So, firms, producers listen most to them. Okay. So, resources are switched to produce what consumers demand. So, it is majority that carries the vote. That is the point there. So, firms will not produce what consumers do not want. They produce mainly on what consumers demand. Reason is this one: price mechanism. Is a market economy system for, in the market economy system provides information on which products are increasing in demand and which ones are falling in demand. So there's price mechanism, which determines the demand for and supply of a product. So because the demand of the product is increasing, we have to switch to start producing these the products. If the demand of a product is falling, we have to stop. And start looking for what producer. We have to stop and start looking for what consumers need. So that's what price mechanism works for. The second is that the market economy system provides an incentive for resources to move in, in response to changes in demand. Because resources have to be used, economic goods they have to be used, right? Yes. So we want to produce what consumers want. So that means. For example, if demand for books is increasing, why is the demand for cinema tickets falling? Profits and wages will be rising in the pub in the publishing industry, while they will be falling in the they will be falling in the film industry. So we're talking about why what happens when the demand for certain product increases and the demand for certain product falls. If the demand in the economy uh, in the educational system, for example, if the demand for schools, if students are increasing each year. That means the demand for education increases, yes or no? Yes. So in the educational industry, wages will increase in the educational industry because firms will be needing more teachers. And let's assume that the demand for phones are reducing. So that means in the mobile industry, wages will fall because firms are not selling as they used to sell. So that is the point they are talking about here. Is it clear? Yes. So these changes will encourage these changes will encourage some firms to switch production and some workers to change their jobs. So there's going to be a switch of production and there's going to be a switch of jobs. So now that I know that, okay, I'm in the, uh, in the mobile industry or in the health sector, and things are not fine. And I heard that in the educational sector, they, they could pay well. I could switch to become a doctor for the school instead of a doctor in the hospital. Do you get the point here? So we start switching jobs because in here, or I could become a chemistry or biology teacher because the educational industry, just take an example here, because the educational industry is paying better. Is it clear? Yes. The third reason is that the market economy system punishes those firms, workers and owners of capital and land who do not respond to changing demand. So the third advantage is that as a firm, if you don't, if you are not flexible to work in tune, with the demand of consumers, you are on your own. You will go down. You will suffer because the market economy system will punish you. If demand is for education and you are not thinking about that, you are, you are just building, for example, you are building churches or mosques, when the demand for is education, you know what is going to come there because they want school now. Just example, please. Yes, yes, yes. Because they want school. So if you are not producing, if you are not in line, if you are not flexible as a firm enough to produce what the demand of customers are, you are falling out, you are going apart. That is the point. Is it clear? So these are the reasons why the market economy system is advantageous. And that's why they focus resources on producing what demands, what customers demand because of price mechanism, because they are able to switch from one product to another, and because if they don't, they won't be selling. They will lose out. 
clear. Yes. The third advantage, there's choice. Consumers can choose which products to buy and which firms to buy from. Firms can also decide what they want to produce and workers can choose who to work for. The third advantage about the market economy system is choice. Consumers have choices, workers have choices, firms can choose what they want to produce. Government cannot force them to produce A if they want to produce B. That's an advantage for firms. Consumers can buy from whoever they want to buy from. You can't put gun at their head to buy from you. You can't. They have choices to make. Workers can choose which kind of job they want, who they want to work for. That's an advantage in the market economy system. Is it clear? The fourth one, costs and prices may be low. The profit motive and competition promote efficiency. Cost might be low. Prices might also be low. But there is a motive. And the motive is what? The motive yeah. to, you know, to gain more customers, the motive to make profits will bring about efficiency. So they think they know that, oh, in this industry, there's a lot of competition. There's a, it's competitive here. Mm -hmm. What can we do? We need to be efficient. How are we going to be efficient? By using the latest technology, by reducing waste, by applying different production, or, or applying different production methods. To ensure that they, they can able to they are able to reduce their waste. Because they are able to do this, they become efficient. They use quality products. Yes or no? Yes. So because there's competition, because they cannot reduce, they cannot increase prices. They have to find a way around it to reduce their cost so that they can also sell at a lower price. So all these things brings about efficiency. So they become efficient because they are able to reduce their cost and they are able to sell at a lower price. The last one, I think this is the last one there. Yeah. yeah, quality may be high. Market forces can promote the improvement of metals of production and a rise in quality of products made. It does this by putting competitive pressure on firms and by providing them with the profit incentive to try to gain more sales by making their products more attractive to consumers. So the last advantage is about the quality. Quality is important. The quality may be high. Market forces can promote the improvement of methods of production. Yeah. As a firm, you already know that if you are not able to, you know, if you are unable to compete with your rivals, you'll be out of the business. So what will you do? You have to give whatever it takes. You have to bring everything you can bring on table to attract your customers. Yes. So the first thing you have to do is quality. Because quality means you are meeting customers' expectations. That is the meaning of quality meeting customers' expectations. If you are able to meet customers' expectations, they always come to you. Yes or no? Yes. So because you can do that, you become more competitive. You provide, it allows you to even make profit because the, your customers already trusted you. They don't want to try other businesses. They don't want to go to your competitors. They don't want to go to your rivals. They always want to come to you because they trust your products. They trust your service. So as a result of this, you will always want to be, you know, at you know, you want to always want to, you always want to be at the top to give them the best quality ever, so I don't lose them. So this is an advantage for customers because it means that they will derive satisfaction from what they are consuming, isn't it? Yes. So go to the problems. What are the problems of market economy system? There's a risk that the market forces of demand and supply may not work well. In fact, there's a market failure there may be market failure. And what is market failure? Market failure occurs when the market forces fall into it, failing to ensure the maximum benefit of society. So we call it market failure because the, uh, the demand, uh, the market forces of demand and supply are unable to provide goods and services that consumers want. So let's assume Consumers need 1,000 laptops. You provided 900. That's a market failure. Because the demand was on 1,000, you couldn't provide it. If you provide products that does not satisfy consumers, it's a market failure. If you provide products that consumers are unable to afford, it's a market failure. 
this is what market failure is here. If you provide products without quality, it's a market failure. So let's look at what they said about reasons why we have market failure. Number one, consumers and private sector firms may only take into account the cost and benefits of to themselves and not the cost and benefits to their, of their decisions to others. So if firms put into consideration only the cost and benefits to themselves alone, that's they think more of their private cost and private benefits, it is a market failure because it means they don't care about consumers. Whatever happens, it's their cup of tea. So here we could talk about maybe the cigarette company. They produce cigarettes. They incur their costs. They make money. They don't care if it's good for the health or not. That is what we're talking about here. So we talked about the first one, right? The second one. Competition between firms should ensure efficiency, but in practice, there will be little competition. A market may become dominated by one or few firms. These firms have considerable market power, leading to limited or no choice for consumers. That's they smart. can they can raise the price of their price of their product and produce poor quality products as people have no choice but to buy from them. Another problem about market economic systems is that it could lead to a market failure based on the fact that few firms might dominate the industry by kicking out other firms. So you know when you kick out other firms, it means that Choices reduces for consumers. So if choices reduce for consumers, consumers become vulnerable to you. Do you get the point I'm making here? Yes. So the point here is that with competition, firms might find other way around to make sure that the competition reduce. And how can they do this? They can do this by kicking out those ones that they think are not powerful. They can collide. They can form a cartel. Do you get it? Yes. The third point. Even when there is competition and firms, even when there is competition and firms, and firms want to respond to the to desires of consumers, they may not be able to do this. This may be because they cannot attract more workers, as workers lack the right skills or are geographically immobile. So another problem is this, where we have market failure. It might not be because firms do not want to produce what they are supposed to produce. They might not be able to get the right workers needed or the right machine that needed to produce those products. And in which ways, there's market failure. Do you understand? Yes. So it's not from the firms now, but situation around there makes them to have shortage, which leads to a market failure. Clear? Yes. The next one. Firms will not make products unless they think they can charge for them. There are some products such as defense, which most people may want, but now, but know if they are provided for some, they will have to provide for all. In such cases, people can act as free riders. When you talk about free riders, we're talking about you enjoying some benefits that you never contributed to. You become a free rider. One of the this this is one of the problem about um, a planned economy system. If government provides everything. There will be free rider problem. Example, if government provides street lights or good road, yes. those that pay taxes will pass through the road, yes or no? And those that do not pay taxes will pass through the road, yes or no? Yes. As a result of that, those that pass through the road without taxes are what we call free riders. They are enjoying the benefits they never contributed to. Do you understand? So the, do you understand the point I'm making about free riders here? Mm. Free riders are those people who enjoy certain benefits that they never contributed to. If you are not paying your tax mm. and your children and you are supposed to be paying tax, but your children goes to a, your children go to a public school that is funded by government money, by taxpayers' money, you are a free rider. You get what free rider is yet. You are enjoying the benefits you never contributed to. 
That's why there is a paper of school. Like simple. Like, like yeah, yeah, public schools. Public schools. Yeah. Public schools. Yeah, public schools. There are some uh, free ones. That's supposed to be right. No. 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 Public school is for everyone. Public school is for everybody. Yeah. If now I'm citing an example, like in this country, maybe you have to pay tax. So mm -hmm. if government builds schools yes. with taxes of individuals, yes. taxes of firms, and you are not paying tax, yes. in the process, your children go to the same school that they've used taxpayers' money to build. You are a free rider. No, okay. it's not illegal. It's normal. It's like uh, you're not. It happens. Time. You are not. You are not part of those that contributed. And you are supposed to contribute, but you are not. You never contributed, but you are enjoying the benefit of what you did not contribute to. Mm. That makes you a free rider. You get a free rider here. Yes, sir. So a free rider is what an individual who does not or who enjoys the benefit of certain product or service without contributing directly or indirectly to such products or to such service. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, for example, now they say defense. When we talk about defense, the private sector will not provide defense. The private sector would not invest in good road. The private sector will not invest in street lights. Mm -hmm. Because if they do invest, who is going to pay? Not everybody will pay. Yes or no? Yes, so because of because no because nobody would pay, they won't invest on it. So that means the private sector will fail to provide us with public goods. Yes, yes. Do you get the point yes. I'm I'm deriving at? The private sector will fail to provide public goods. That is why there's a market failure. The private sector won't provide public goods because there's a, there's going to be free rider problem. And who are the free riders? These are individuals, groups of people, firms, whatever it is, whatever economic agents they have, they enjoy the benefit of certain services without them contributing directly or indirectly into such service. Is it clear? Yes. Advertising can stop consumers' choice. It can persuade people to buy products they would not otherwise have wanted to encourage them to buy larger quantities. Consumers and producers may also lack information and hence may make an inefficient process. Another problem in the market system is what we call, uh, we call it, um, advertising, we call it, I want to remember, I want to remember, persuasive advertisements. Is it? Persuasive. You persuade people to buy. Mm -hmm. You're persuading them to buy. And also, asymmetric information. When people okay. lack information about what they are buying, they don't have full knowledge about what they are buying. Or the information is wrong. Information failure, yes. So when you provide wrong information, wrong advertisement, it's a market failure. Yes, my... You told customers it is A. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it is B. This could happen in the market system because there's no regulation. The government is not controlling them. Do you get the point? It's not illegal. It's not illegal. It's not. It's a business. They do it to make profit. They just want to make their own profit. Mm. So they don't want to give you the full details about what you are buying. They just want to keep some things. They want you to, you lack information about what you're buying. That is the point. Clear. Is it clear? Yes, yes, yes. So they spend so much on advertisement. They convince, they convince you. They never convinced you. But you think they are convincing you now. They are, they are lying. They are not telling you the truth. Do you understand? Yes, yes. So that's the market failure. As well as market forces sometimes failing to achieve efficiency, they can also result in they can also result in what may be regarded to be inequitable or fair outcomes. In the market economy system, some consumers will have a lack of income. There can be very uneven distribution of income, with some people being very rich and others being very poor. The sick and the disabled may find it difficult to earn incomes. The old may not have made may not have made adequate financial provision for their retirement. Some workers may become unemployed and may find it difficult to find new jobs. This point is about income. Yeah. So 
there might be unevil distribution of resources of goods. So in the market, the market economy system sells to those that can afford them. That is the point. Mm -hmm. So when you think about everything here, it's about your level of income, yes or no? Yes. So your level of income is determined by what your affordability has, yes. isn't it? Yes. So the problem about market or market economy system is that they provide goods and services for those who are rich. Clear? Is it clear, please? Yes, yes. Differences in income will increase over time. Those earning high incomes can afford to save and buy shares. Their savings and shares will earn them interest and dividends, a share of profit. In contrast, the poor cannot afford to save. The children of the rich will be more likely than the children of the poor to earn high incomes. This is because their parents are able to spend more on their education, provide better equipment, such as computers at home for them, and thus they have high hopes of what they can achieve. So the last point is that the rich become richer, the poor become poorer. That is the point. Is it clear? Yes. So we go to allocative efficiency. So why, why, do, why do we call it allocative efficiency? We call it allocative efficiency because we are able to maximize consumer satisfaction. Do you get my point here? Allocative, allocation means you are able to distribute. Mm -hmm. So there's allocation, uh, there's allocative efficiency. When consumer satisfaction are able to you know, are put in, in are put are put into consideration. So you think more about how to distribute resources to ensure you think about the welfare of consumers. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Yes. So let's say they said allocative efficiency of consumer resources allocated in the way to maximize consumer satisfaction. This means that firm produces the product that consumers demand in the right quantities. So look at this. Then he said, this table shows allocative efficiency being achieved with supply matching consumers demand. In contrast, so let's look at it. Demand and supply equals here. That is allocative efficiency. Yes. Demand is more than supply here. Mm. That, is, that is inefficiency. And the third one is also what inefficiency. Do you understand? So allocative efficiency will come when demand meets supply. Yes, so. Do you get it? Quantity and demand and supply. Equals. Equals, yeah. Is it clear? Market forces by chance by changing prices should eliminate shortages and surpluses and move market towards allocative efficiency. Competition can play a key role in this process. This is because in the competitive market, a firm has an incentive to be allocative efficient in the form of profit. So let me stop there first. As a firm, because there's a tendency for you to make profit, yes or no? Yeah. So because you know you could make profit, what can you do? Try to provide goods and services that consumers need. So switch from where you are inefficient to where you are efficient. Because when you are efficient, customers will buy from you. That is the point then. It's like equilibrium and Same. Yeah, same. but don't talk about equilibrium here. Let's um, talk yeah. about allocation. Yes. Do you get it? Because when you talk about equilibrium, we're talking about price and all. But here we're talking about allocation. Do you get my point? Yes, yes. There's equilibrium when demand equals to supply. Mm -hmm. That's equilibrium. Yes. But here we're talking about allocative efficiency, where yes. you are able to satisfy consumer needs. Demand, supply, and quantity. But Do you understand? The equilibrium, the equilibrium involves price. Price. Yes. Yes. It also has a threat of punishment in the form of risk of going out of businesses. Okay, so it's like if it is more responsive to the needs of consumers as compared to its rivals, it should gain a larger market share and earn higher profits, at least for a while. Well, it's more responsive to the needs of consumers as compared to its rivals, it should gain a larger market share. Because you are able to provide for your customers what they need, you are responsive to them. They wouldn't want to leave you. So it means you will continue. And one thing about consumers is this. When you provide them with a poor service, they tell 100 people. So you lose a lot of customer base. But when you provide them with quality service, at least they tell 10 people. Do yes. you understand the difference here? When, you, when your service is poor, 100 yes. people will know about it. When your service is good, then people will be sure of getting. 
In contrast, if it does not produce commodities demanded by consumers, it will lose sales to rivals and may be driven out of the market. So the point is, if you are not efficient, you're going to lose sales. You're going to lose sales and you're done. You will be out of the industry. Now go to productive efficiency. If M is said to be productive efficient, when it produces at the lowest possible cost per unit. So productive efficiency means you are able to produce at the lowest cost per unit. Allocative efficiency means you are able to provide goods and services that benefit consumers. You think about their welfare. Productive efficiency means you are able to produce goods and services at the least low at the lowest unit cost. Mm -hmm. Again, in a competitive market, if it has both an incentive and a threat of punishment, we should drive it towards being productive efficient. So it can drive its costs down to the lowest possible level to capture more sales and gain more profit. If, if however, its costs are per unit are higher than its drivers, it will lose market share and possibly all of its sales. So in a, in a, in a market system, in the competitive market system, when we talk about productive efficiency, a firm has its gain and punishment. A firm will gain if it is able to reduce its unit cost, because at that point in time, it will be able to sell, it will be able to sell at a lower price to gain more customers. The punishment is this: if a firm is unable to reduce its cost, it will lose customers because its product, its price will hike, so it will lose customers to competitors, and within a while, it's going to be out of market. But they can not reduce the cost, but they will uh, lose. So is that a business? You can lose, but they will uh, gain more customers and then... You can't incur more cost and sell at a lower price. No, that is not a real deal. Mm. When you incur more cost, you sell at higher prices. But some, I think that business is like, yeah, if you have no customer, you're, the, you're uh, being, you're doing the, how can I say? It's the... If you're going to start a business. Okay, and then the cost will be like high for the customer. Okay, and you're going to lower the cost. Uh, the if cost your customers, yes. the point is, if your customers are, if your competitors are selling at a lower price, mm. why are you selling at a high price? That's the point. You know what I'm saying? There's productive efficiency, which means in that industry, yes. all the firms should be productive efficient. So if you are not productive efficient, it is your problem. It means you are not doing it right. Yes. Yes. Or what are you trying to say? I was trying to say that, like, uh, for example, iPhone and Samsung. iPhone is much higher because... No, 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 no that's I'm, price. That's, yeah, that's price. I was trying to say, like, if there is something like... Uh, let's see. I'm going to use iPhone and Samsung. Yes. So iPhone and Samsung, they are competitors. iPhone cost is more than something. Are you talking about the cost or you're talking about the price? No, about the, about the cost. It's about the cost. Yeah, if you're talking about the cost, you are a consumer. Yes. <laughs> you are not the producer of Apple. You are not part of producers. This is where the point comes from. Yes. If Apple is incurring more cost than other firms in that market, the price of Apple, Apple uh, gadgets will increase, yes or no? Yes. And other companies like Huawei, like Samsung, Sony, their prices are getting low. It means something is wrong with Apple. But trust me, in this industry, in the telecom or the mobile industry, it, I won't see it as a, I won't see it as a competitive industry. I will see it as an oligopoly. Do you get my point here? Yes, yes. Well, let's talk about why do I say it's an oligopoly? It's an oligopoly because few large firms are controlling the industry. Isn't it? Yes. So do you want to tell me that is competitive? There's no competition there. Do you understand? So that is the point about that. But what I'm saying here is for productive efficiency, a firm needs to be productive efficient. Why? Because there's a gain and there's a punishment. The gain is that if you are productive efficient, it means you'll be able to, you would have been able to reduce your cost. You'll be able to sell at a lower price and you'll be able to make more profit because you will gather more customers and your sales will increase. On the other hand, 
if you are not productive efficient, it means you would have incurred more cost. And when you incur more cost, you don't have any other choice than to increase the prices of your goods. You don't want to run at a loss. If you are not efficient, it means you cannot even provide quality. So you're going to run at loss? No. You want to increase the prices. As soon as you increase prices, you start losing customers to your competitors who are productive efficient. So they start gaining your customers. So when they do, you are, you are uh, logically, you are out of the market. Stylishly, you are out of the industry. That is the point. Is it clear? Yes. So if a firm is productive efficient, the last paragraph there, if a firm is productive efficient, it means that it is not wasting resources. If all producers in a country are productive efficient, the economy will be able to make full use of its resources and hence will be producing on its productive production possibility curve. So do you get the point here? So if all resources are fully utilized, it means the economy or the country will be producing on its production possibility curve on A. Scroll down, do you see it? On A. That is production efficient, that's productive efficiency. Is it clear? Yes. So we go to dynamic efficiency. Dynamic efficiency arises when resources are used efficiently over a period of time. The profit incentive and the threat of going out of business can encourage firms in the market system to spend money on research and development and to innovate. Those firms that introduce new methods of production and bring out new improved products, increase their chances, their chance of gaining high profits. Those that do not seek to keep up with new ideas of products or produce products and do not develop new products run the risk of being driven out of the market. Dynamic efficiency is what Apple is using in this in their industry. Apple comes out with different new products. They do research. So because they are able to, you know, the fund to invest on research and development, they come up with different innovation. And what happens? They continue to develop and develop and develop. Apple was not the, the top or the number one before. Go back to the 80s, the 90s, there were different mobile industry, mobile firms. There was Nokia, there was Motorola, all these firms, because they are unable to, you know, to invest more on research and development. They can't keep up to the demand of customers. That's why they fought. That's why they failed. Blackberry was there. Blackberry was sometimes at the top. That Apple was below, behind it. But Blackberry was unable to meet up with the high demand in the market. Then it loses its customers. Then at the end of it, it loses the industry. So firms have to be dynamic efficient. Because when you are dynamic efficient, it means you are putting, you are, you know, you are up to date in everything that involves that industry. You keep up with customers' needs. You keep up with consumers' demand. You make research. You develop. You invest. You innovate. You come up with new products. You come up with new ideas. Because with this, you won't be losing your customers to competitors. Because when, they, when your customers think of A, it's already produced through your research and development. Do we understand? Yes. Any question about that? No. OK. So here they said examples of different economic systems. So to a certain extent, all economies are mixed economies. This is because there's some government intervention in all economies and some private sector production. The term mixed economy or mixed economic system, however, is largely used, used to describe an economy which has private and public sectors of reasonably similar sizes. An example of such is Sweden. So we call it a mixed economy because in this economy, it is both the market system and the plant system. Is it clear? Yes. Scroll down, please. Changes in the economic system. Are you there? Yes. In the 80s and the 90s, a number of economies, including the UK and New Zealand, moved from being likely mixed economies to being mainly market economies. The role of the government was reduced by removing the number of government regulations, selling of SOEs and part of it, and lowering taxations. So what you're saying is that what happens with these countries? These countries were largely focused or uh, 
largely dependent on government, but it changed after the Industrial Revolution. That is in the 90s, it changed. So now firms started you know, coming up. So those things that have been produced by government start being produced by individuals, private firms. That is the point. So they said there was an even more dramatic change in the economies of Eastern Europe, including Poland and Russia in the 90s. They moved from being planned economies towards market economies. These economies have experienced a significant increase in consumer choice and the rise in the quality of products produced. They have also, however, seen a rise in income inequality and poverty. Because they are moving to thinking more of profits, it is increasing poverty. It is increasing income inequality. Some are so rich, while some are so poor. Mm -hmm. Because resources are not determined by government anymore. In the government economy, in the planned economy system, everyone is equal. But in the market system, they provide for those who are able to afford them. So you go to the best school because you can you are able to afford the best school. So those that cannot afford the best school are losing their chances in the industry, in the market, in the labor market, because they won't have best or good certificates. So it will become difficult for them to get jobs. And when they can't get jobs, how can they meet up? How can they climb the ladder, the social ladder? How can they? So their lack, their poverty, would the poverty, the, the poverty of parents would be transferred to the children because the children do cannot stay at par or cannot compete with the children of the rich. That is the point. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Any question about it? No. So go to the multiple choice questions. The first one. What is an advantage of the market economy? Market economy. Uh, I don't see the quality. Humans, uh, yeah, big. Big company. Why did you say? No, Firms yeah. have considerable market power. No, no. It doesn't. It is B, consumer sovereignty. Freedom of choosing. What encourages firms to produce what consumers demand? The chance to high, earn high profit. The chance to earn a higher profit, yes. It's all about profit. Yeah. The third point, they said, the diagram below shows the current position in the market. How will market forces move decision towards allocative efficiency? Allocative efficiency. Yeah. Now it is it is inefficient. inefficient yeah. So to make it allocation, what will you do? Uh, right. Rise to supply. Ah, supply is already, already rise. Right, yeah. So uh, demand will rise. Price. Oh, there is price. Ah, price will fall. For allocative efficiency, yeah. Look at where supply is. Supply is, uh, there is supply. There is more supply. There is more supply. No demand. There's no, not demand, no demand, but there is low demand. So what should price have? What should happen to price here? The supply is more. Ah, price will uh, rise. When supply is more? We have high supply here. High supply price. is more than demand. So what should happen? Fall in price. Yeah, fall in price. A fall in price? Yeah, fall in price. Yeah. Fall in price. Okay. And the demand? Fall. Demand will rise. The demand will rise before the price. So fall in... Uh, the, uh, so it's B. So it's B. Yeah. Is it B? Yes, fall in price, uh, rise in demand, and fall in supply. Yes, yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I'm No. Sure. No. Let me tell you something. When supply is more, yes. If prices increases, no. Uh, I said B. Price fall, not increase. Listen. Okay. If supply increases, yes. Let's go back. Okay, I want to show. I'm coming back. I will show you something. Now. Okay, what we'll, what we'll find out here is this. This is showing that there's overproduction. Yes or no? Yes. Definitely. That is what it means that there's overproduction. So if there's overproduction, mm -hmm. what should happen to price? Price will need to fall. Price needs to fall. Why? To make, to have more demand. To have more demand. Yes. Do you know what causes overproduction? 
What? Because price was high. It was high, yeah. That is what causes overproduction. Yes. So because price was high, that causes overproduction. Firms want to go back to allocated efficiency. They have to reduce the price. Yes. Reducing the price means consumers will start buying. Yes or no? Yes, so man. price should fall. Demand will rise. Supply will fall. I said the same thing. Supply will fall, not rise. No, I said B. B is fall, rise, fall. Okay, you said B, right? Yes, yes. yes. Fall, rise, fall. Yes, 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 yes. Is it clear? We we'll go to question four. In the market system, what encourages them to keep their costs low? Competitive. What? Exactly. Competitive. Competition. Yes, competition. In the market system, what encourages firms to keep their costs low? Competition, yes. Competition, yes. So, yeah. Question five. In the diagram below, which movement shows an increase in productive efficiency? Increasing. Yeah. B to A. No, no. No, wait, wait. A and B. It's D to B. Uh, D to A. Oh, wait, wait. C to B. C to B. C to B. It's C to B. I think it's C to B. Yeah. No. None. It is A to B. Productive efficiency, right? So productive efficiency, it means Increase. you're not producing at par. You are producing, from, the way from A to B means that you are able to produce the same level. For B to C, B to C, you are going inward. That, that's, that's, uh, that's left towards uh, shift. Yes. Inward shift, sorry, inward shift. Yes. It's not good. Yeah. C to D. It's still below. It's still not productive efficient. But B, uh, A to D. It can't be A to D. Okay, uh, oh, yeah. So it is A to B. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yes, I said D to B. There's no D to B. There's no D to B. To B or C no, A to B. B to C is inward. That is not productive efficient. C to D is still in between. Yes, yes. So it is A to B. A to B, yeah. So we stop here. So that's the end of that chapter. Oh, there's a chapter.